Okay, hi guys, and welcome to another unsponsored independent review of perhaps the most important release, in my opinion. This is the official watch for Mars. Yep, that's right. <laughs> While the, the world goes absolutely gaga for another millionth limited edition speedy, or a Rolex uh, with slightly different color bezel or whatever. Here we have something for the real watch enthusiasts. Now, don't forget to like this video, very, very important. Naturally, I will do my wristwatch check, there we go. And as we're discussing space watches, yes, boom, bow, look at that. My uh, Breitling Cosmonaut uh, Navi timer there. So as always, let's start out with a little bit of history. Um, oh, and I should also thank Watchbuys for lending this in. They are the official AD in North America for Fortis. So without further ado, uh, let's check out the backstory. Now, as I said many times, Fortis is one of the most underrated and important Swiss watch brands of all time. Founded in 1912, they first made history producing the world's first automatic wristwatch in collaboration with British horologist John Harwood. They were also an early innovator in some of the first waterproof watches with the aptly named Fortissimo. However, the brand is mostly famous for its highly acclaimed aviation and space-going fliegers. Since the 1960s, Fortis has supplied and specially engineered watches for astronauts. First with the Spacematic, used by NASA during testing by seven members of a US space mission, it was constructed to hold up in extreme conditions and temperature changes. Since 1994, Fortis has been the exclusive supplier of manned space missions authorized by the Russian Federal Space Agency. The official cosmonaut chronograph has become perhaps the brand's most iconic watch and is now synonymous with the brand. After I personally visited the factory in Gretchen, Switzerland, and seeing this Uber tool watches that actually went to space, shortly after I added my own early vintage limited edition to my collection. Fortis introduced strict endurance tests developed specifically to enable their watches to withstand conditions inside and outside the protection of the space station. They even created the first vibrating alarm in an automatic chronograph, designed specially for astronauts to wear during an EVA or extravehicular activity. When an astronaut or cosmonaut is outside the spacecraft beyond the Earth's atmosphere, there is no sound, so a vibrating alarm is highly practical. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Fortis were earning a reputation for excellence and during the 90s and early 2000s, they became the supplier of unique Flieger watches for over a dozen elite military squadrons worldwide and accumulated just as many design awards in the process. However, despite all these illustrious achievements, the brand suffered from financial difficulties in the late 2000s. Thankfully, the brand was saved by a private investor, but most importantly, a fan of the brand, allowing it to maintain its independence, along with a complete renovation of its factory. The result of which was a rebirth of what they do best, superbly made, super tough mechanical aviation watches. Their new Fliegers of 2020 was my favorite release of last year. They were a clever and logical evolution, balancing their own lineage, but simultaneously it was refreshing and an inventive progression. So what's next for Fortis? Well, after conquering space closer to home, mankind's next ambition naturally aim at Mars. This next giant leap is being pioneered by the Austrian Space Forum, or OEWF, and the Israel Space Agency, along with DMARS. AMADI is a flagship research program of the Austrian Space Forum, scheduled between 2018 to 2028. Because of the complexity and enormity of the mission, a real-life cutting-edge simulation is needed first. So real astronauts will train and be tested to all aspects of future planetary missions. When it came time to select a watchmaker to meet the needs of this mission, intuitively, the choice was Fortis and the watch we are looking at today. The big mission in the Weltraum is of Mars. And there will Fortis be there. And we have with the Österreich Weltraum Forum for two years already begonnen, a Mars simulation in Oman mit vorzubereiten. Natürlich bleibt Fortis bei mechanischen Uhren. Auf dem Mars gibt es keine Wechselbatterien und deswegen muss sie zum Aufziehen sein. So as always, let's start with dimensions. We have a diameter of 44.3. 
And please note that the um, bezel does overhang, so it's a slightly bit smaller. The height is 14.8 millimeters, and we have a lug to lug of 52.3 and a 20 millimeter lug width. In terms of weight, we're looking at uh, about 144 grams, and that is pretty light. And the reason is because, if you haven't guessed already, it is made out of entirely titanium. As you can see, it is all with this uh, very alluring sandblasted finish. The glass is a flat sapphire. Uh, you have anti-reflective coating AR027 on both sides. And if I angle it, you'll just see that blue tint. We have the chronograph pushes stop start at the top, a screw down signed crown with the um, another crown embossed on it, the logo for supporters, and the reset there at the four o'clock. The screw down crown allows the water resistance to be a very impressive 200 meters. You don't typically see that in a chronograph. We have multiple finishes on the dial, a sunburst for the register at the 12, a vertical brushing for this section here, and then an embossed area following the lines of the case itself. We'll discuss more on this later because it's quite interesting indeed. If we look at the numerals, they are applied and blacked out. Then we have little indices. This is all entirely loomed, as is uh, all three of the main hands there. Um, we even get loomed arrow markers beside each of the apertures for the day and date, indicating which way to turn when setting them with the quick set. Very, very cool indeed. And of course, the orientation is excellent. The Super Luminova used is X1, which has a performance or increase of about 60% after two hours compared to your standard grade luminescence. These arrow markers indicating the, the quick set directions on the crown are very much a um, tradition of Fortis. You'll see it in some of the um, B42s, the later generations after the ones that superseded uh, mine, of course. The hour and minute are in a pencil style blacked out handset. And then we have the arrow tip for the seconds. In terms of the layout, we have the 30 minute counter of the chronograph at the 12, small seconds at the nine, um, and the day date at the three o'clock. One of the most unique features is unequivocally that bezel. It's incredibly solid feeling, uh, 120 click unidirectional. We'll return to this. This is called the mission control bezel, the MCB because this is very, very cool indeed. Virtually no play whatsoever. I believe the insert is a special alloy. Not quite sure uh, what they used, but they chose it um, to match the titanium from what I understand. And it is a very matte, um, slightly different hue of gray. It's a bit more gun metal, I would say. Now do notice it does overhang. This is deliberate because uh, like my gloves, well, not these gloves, but these are Butler gloves. But if you are in an astronaut space suit, you're gonna need a little bit more purchase. So it's improved ergonomics there. It does come on a bracelet, but also if I pull it in, it has um, a parachute strap. Now I can't uh, verify this for sure but I remember when I went to the Reno Air Race and and saw them they took great interest in my NDC strap not this one the the, the standard this is a new NDC strap because I had one of my watches on an NDC so I I don't know if they were inspired by it but they've made their own I have to admit I have not tried it uh, I really like the bracelet I, th I think uh, I, I have I fitted it to myself the links are all tubes with screws including the spring bars uh, these are really really great because it's a much more secure way of doing things in my opinion this is what they call a hook and link uh, system it's pretty cool that this comes with it uh, keeps the weight down and can stretch even further than the bracelet and then of course the bracelet comes with this wonderfully generous um, double push button clasp. There is kind of glide lock style, uh, easy to adjust system. You just push that button and you can um, select several ratcheted gradients, wonderfully milled, impeccably done. The construction here uh, is, is fantastic. This style of, of three link bracelet has a, a good amount of solidity to it, but it is very much a, a trait of the um, of the B-52s. If you look at the inner chapter ring, right at the periphery, uh, there is a 60 minute countdown in absolutely minute 
increments and look at the way that second hand really reaches to it with that crisp white printing you get a very precise reading so what's inside well we have the uw50 automatic caliber uh, which is based on the venerable Valju 7750 of course fitted with a unidirectionally winding special rotor operating at 28,000 800 vibrations an hour 48 hour power reserve hackable manual wind while it is not the cosk certified version uh, of this caliber that um, fortis offer it is highly regulated and i'm getting almost perfect performance here only a few seconds of variation a day i believe they do that on all of their watches when they leave the factory uh, but what is important to note here is the rigorous and extensive testing that the watches are uh, put through uh, because of course these are designed to simulate the most arduous conditions uh, of wear and tear because uh, let's not forget i believe it takes about seven months or around seven months uh, and 300 million miles just to get from here to mars um, so of course they have to last they've got to be robust also it's worthy to point out that unlike the manual wind watches of the 60s that NASA used, automatics actually perform more efficiently in space. So that is why um, Fortis always prefer to go with automatics in their space watches. This is where the watch gets really, really interesting. First of all, let's discuss um, the motivation or, or decision behind using titanium. Well, most of you know that compared to stainless steel, it cuts the weight almost in half. Um, just imagine how heavy this would be in, in stainless steel. During space missions, every single gram you're, you're loading onto your spacecraft matters. Also, it's more durable, it's non-magnetic. Again, crucial if you're in a cockpit full of equipment that uh, radiate very strong magnetic fields. It's hypoallergenic, it's scratch and corrosion resistant. This makes titanium the logical ultimate material, especially within the field of aerospace. Uh, anyone remember the Breitling Aerospace? The sandblasted finish is not just functional, but the designer, I believe, was very much inspired by the surface of Mars itself. And lastly, the more muted grey does give off quite a futuristic vibe. So let's talk about this bezel. Well, this is, um, well, I've certainly never seen this before, and you will likely never see it again, because the MCB, or Mission Control Bezel, allows for astronauts to quickly turn the bezel and know exactly when further communications will be arriving from ground control, uh, because it takes about 10 minutes to send or receive a message from Earth to Mars, because of the lag between these two planets. Hence the two arrow markers on the bezel and the luminous plots. Utterly ingenious, a simple but clever solution. Again, we have a more typical countdown aviation style bezel. This along with the 30 minute register being uh, exaggerated and extra large is very deliberate because apparently uh, most of the practical experiments that they're gonna be uh, undertaking require timing within or around 30 minutes. And they've named it the grand counter for that reason obviously intended to be as legible as possible to the user. Again, we see the requirements of the mission guiding the design. If we start the chronograph, you'll notice that the seconds, well, the main chronograph seconds hand matches that of the uh, 30 minute subdial, but it's also supposed to match the mission patch there, which is beautifully applied, very three dimensional and has quite a lot of hidden meaningful symbols. Definitely reminds me of something out of Star Trek. I could see it on a Starfleet uniform, uh, <laughs> absolutely no problem. These vivid blues that uh, complement each other is a bit of a departure. Typically we see, well, mine is probably not a good example, but typically we see that neon orange uh, that is uh, a kind of signature for the brand highly legible of course but uh, i like how this works it's um, a bit more understated the sub seconds of the nine very minimal in contrast left uh, quite simple but i think definitely resembles a star again keeping in with that space theme an interesting quirky thing to note is on the date wheel when you scroll through it the 13 is left blue this is a little calling card uh, of the brand it's their lucky number and a nice reminder that you're wearing a watch from an independent brand that really cares deeply about 
their creations. If we look at the screw in case back, you'll see uh, an ultra engraved lines of orbit of the planets there along with the moon. I like the uh, what they've written, Next Giant Leap. It's obviously a play on Neil Armstrong's moving words when he first walked on the moon, but also quite poignant and inspiring because of course this obviously is for the next chapter. And lastly, we see the trademark eagle head screwed lug holes on the lugs. It's funny looking at it now and then comparing it, you can see the how they evolved over the years to be more angular. They really point down and funny enough, despite its size, it is extremely comfortable and, and uh, I see why they did that. Very substantial lugs. In terms of positives, well, the watch undeniably looks ultra utilitarian at first glance, but in actuality, it is a finely nuanced continuation of their B42 space watch. The refinement we see is very fitting, it's embellishment, not in a shallow or obvious way, like simply making it flashy or with delusional aspirations of luxury. It's done in a subtle way with rich details that add character and charm, but most importantly, not diminishing its core reason for existing, which is function, obviously. Intentional or not, the watch very much reminds me of the brutalist architecture found in the Total Recall movie. The lovable original Verhoeven classic with good old Arnie, uh, not the trashy remake obviously. That aesthetic is always inherently modern and works well with the masculine I'm here to kick ass and chew bubblegum kind of a look. And it's certainly all out of gum. Goes without saying that this is built like an absolute tank. The value of this watch, aside from its exceptional Swiss made quality and faultless performance, comes from owning a more original choice from a brand with a truly prestigious legacy and heritage. I've called Fortis the most underrated watch brand of all time and I still stand by that statement. For me, there is a strong sense of verisimilitude that comes with owning a Fortis an infinitely less predictable choice. I have a great deal of respect for this brand, their achievements, and you definitely feel the momentum of history in the making here. The watch does an excellent job of that, reminding you in a fun way. If you were to see somebody wearing this watch, not only is it a great conversation starter, but there's no doubt that they appreciate good watches, solid design, history, and horology at a deeper level. So what are the negatives? Well, first of all, um, just like with my Fortis there, it's not the most versatile of watches. I mean, this is a tool there to do a job. You're not gonna be, well, you're not gonna be able to wear this with more formal attire. It'll be a bit like wearing flip-flops with a Savile Row suit, but that's why they have the more elegant classic chronographs too, that I have to add were also worn in space. You can see photos of astronauts wearing that on the NASA website even. Okay, my next big negative, you probably guessed it, yeah. Yep, that's right, the size. It's damn big, but you know what? It kind of gets a pass because it's supposed to be big. It's not big for the sake of it. Bigger watches are just more legible. I mean, look at the very first 55 millimeter Fliegers or the Navi timer, for example. Obviously, you are going to alienate the smaller wristed. Would I like a 38 millimeter like my uh, vintage Fortis there? Of course I would, but you know what? My bank account wouldn't, <laughs> so. Uh, there's, a, there's always a silver lining, right? Having said that, it is remarkably comfortable. It's not that big from lug to lug. And also the weight um, being almost, I mean, if you were to take the bracelet off, it weighs the same as this. It's remarkably comfortable. However, I would love to see a tapering bracelet. I understand they wanted a larger clasp to house that lovely uh, extension system, but um, I just think they could have cut down a little bit of the weight and to me, and maybe it's just me, I don't know, what do you guys think? Tapering bracelets are always a little bit more, just a little bit more elegant. But then again, will it be less secure? I don't know. Another thing that people are certainly going to complain about, well, it comes with almost every watch, and that is what people love to complain about the money. I think people just have to suck it up and understand the amount of testing, the amount of QC costs labor into making a watch of this level. But at the same time, you cannot deny there is a lot of stiff competition uh, from other watch brands out there. Another little critique, and it's something I appreciate about both my um, space going watches there, is uh, I would like to see a 24 hour 
indicator. You see the cosmonaut there, um, the hour hand rotates every 24 hours. Very unconventional and it takes a bit of getting used to. Another solution is to have a subdial. Now this is useful in space watches in particular because of course in space there's no night or day and it, you can become a bit disorientated. So having that reference is very very useful. It's just a suggestion but for me my favorite uh, space going watches as you can see always had some kind of 24 hour feature like that. So in conclusion, uh, well, it's inevitable to make comparisons to the Amiga Speedmaster. You cannot talk about space going watches without doing so. These days, the only speedy you see going on actual missions are the Annie Digi X33. Because as much as we adore the speedy, and trust me, I've owned countless versions, a manually wound racing watch with Hesselite crystal from 1957 simply is not going to cut it anymore, especially in a post G-Shock world. Fortis are unlike any company in this field because they specialize in precisely serving that need and have done since the early 1960s. The Amadi watch is the epitome of this experience and the almost perfect example of what a contemporary tool watch should be. It blends a well-established design language that is distinctly 40s. You can see demonstrated in my own 90s vintage model, but updated, uh, not by following trends or fads, but to serve function. That is what makes a good design and ultimately a compelling watch. With the iconic and slightly ubiquitous Speedy, you're owning something that happened half a century ago. But with this, you are owning a piece of history that is in the making. There you have it, and as you can tell, I'm extremely impressed with this. Another home run from Fortis. Uh, their newest releases have yet again been some of the best of the year. Uh, have a look back at the previous review of their Fliegers. Amazing, amazing watches. Um, just chuffed to bits to see this from Fortis, a brand that very much is coming back to full force. Now, don't forget to like this video, very important indeed, especially if you want to see more uh, in-depth independent reviews of watches like this uh, also uh, equally important is your opinions i'd love to hear your feedback on this release uh, and i will catch you in the next one thank you for watching ciao